to 2015. But it's being warned today of another major challenge it will face next year, namely the rollout of the National Disability Insurance Scheme. The NDIS, of course, enjoys support across the political divide, with the Abbott government inheriting responsibility for its delivery when it, of course, won the election in 2013. And the first ever survey of organisations in the disability sector, released today by the sector's peak body, the National Disability Services, suggests critical decisions need to be made on this scheme soon. The report, released today, says some providers are already being affected by uncertainty and also claims there could be a funding short fall if state governments cut their own disability funding. For more, I'm joined by Assistant Minister for Social Services, Senator Mitch Firefield, who of course is in our Melbourne studio. Senator, thanks for your time today. Before we get into this report, of course, we've learnt today of the death of Stella Young over the weekend, a writer, comedian and of course a, a fierce disability advocate. Tom, uh, there's a lot of sadness uh, in the disability community today. Uh, Stella was uh, an outstanding human being. She was uh, uh, an outstanding disability advocate. She was a, a great writer and a broadcaster as well. Uh, but she did so much to uh, raise uh, the profile of uh, issues that are faced by Australians with disability and what I particularly loved was that she used uh, charm and humour uh, to highlight discrimination and also uh, negative attitudes towards people with disability that they've put up with for too long. Uh, uh, she certainly uh, taught me a lot uh, and she uh, was a very generous spirit so uh, uh, there's a great deal of, of sadness uh, today. Yes, yeah, certainly the service uh, she gave to everybody in that sector no doubt will be remembered for a long time. Uh, on to this report that, as I said, uh, is about the National Disability Insurance Scheme and the sector more broadly. It talks about 2015 being a very important and critical year for the scheme. The last year, of course, before the full rollout begins. What do you make in particular of these concerns raised about uncertainty for providers and a lot of decisions needing, needing to be made very soon? Well, Tom, I, I think it's important to recognise that we're pretty much where we aim to be and expected to be at the moment. We had uh, four trial sites commence uh, in the middle of last year, a further three trial sites commenced in uh, the middle of this year. Uh, there are now uh, around 9,000 people who are participants in the scheme. Uh, we've spent about uh, $400 million providing better support to uh, Australians with disability in those trial sites. Uh, We've uh, learnt lessons and been learning lessons from the trial sites uh, as uh, was the, the intent uh, so that they can be taken into account and adjustments made before we move on to uh, full rollout. Uh, over the next six months uh, there will be uh, negotiations between the Commonwealth and the States to work out the bilateral agreements to go from the trial sites to full nationwide rollout by 2018-19. Uh, now there, now, there was a, a key part of that if I can just... Mm -hmm. Yeah, a key part of that, if I can just jump in, the concerns within this report are that for the people in the so-called Tier 2 category, they don't qualify, they won't qualify for the full support package, but they'll get some support that perhaps state and territory governments are looking to withdraw some of the funding in that area. Have you had any indication of that? And would the Commonwealth step up to the plate, if so, and make up any shortfall for those Tier 2 people? It could be 4.8 million people, according to this report. Well, Tom, the, uh, the NDIS, uh, as you rightly point out, has uh, three tiers. Tier three is uh, the uh, individualised and personalised funding packages. Tier two is uh, uh, broader uh, community supports for people who might not be in receipt of uh, an individualised package. And tier one is the nationwide referral and information service for the whole nation. Uh, there'll be about 460,000 people uh, in Tier 3 receiving those uh, uh, personalised funding packages. Uh, and there's an important role for, for Tier 2 uh, to provide uh, mainstream services. But that's actually a, a shared responsibility between uh, the NDIS uh, and also the states and territories who have ongoing so, so responsibilities. You, so you don't have any... There's no indication that there would be a, a state or territory shortfall in that area because that's what this report uh, says that there are some concerns there'll be less of that state and territory money. Well it's something that we need to uh, carefully monitor and uh uh, NDS, the uh, peak provider body, uh, has produced a good body of work today. Uh, we need to 
carefully monitor because the states and territories under the National Disability Strategy have ongoing responsibilities in all portfolio areas, in, in education, in transport, uh, to provide the sorts of services that uh, people with disability need. So the NDIS was never intended to, to do everything for everyone. Uh, it's an important element. Uh, there will be ongoing responsibilities for state and territory governments, but we do need to carefully monitor to make sure that they continue their own effort in those areas. Where does the NDIS sit when it comes to government priorities? Because we know the budget emergency we're being told about. We know, for example, very few things except for perhaps defence spending, and not even defence pay, but defence spending generally have been segregated. Is this something that you can isolate? Do you go in there and you're told that the NDIS will be fine and the quantum of funding, that $19.3 billion over seven years from 2012 onwards, that is safe, locked off? Well, I think that the proof was uh, in our first budget where uh, the NDIS was uh, fully provided for in the budget year and over the forward estimates. And uh, the reason for that is because this is core government business, providing support to people who face extra challenges for reasons beyond their control is core government business. And it's one of the reasons why uh, we're determined to uh, cut our cloth in other portfolio areas is so that we can get back to focusing on what should be the core business of government uh, and the NDIS is that absolutely. So just to clarify, because there's a lot of talk about government promises and what was ruled in, ruled out, even with the deteriorating situation we're seeing now, the changed situation, if you like, revenue write-downs, we'll wait and see what my EFO says, we, we should not brace ourselves for any sort of pairing back of NDIS funding. No, we're committed to the full rollout of the NDIS uh, and we flagged that uh, in our last budget that the uh, funding provision is there. Uh, I'm committed to it, uh, the Prime Minister is committed to it, uh, the Treasurer is committed to it and I've got to say it's one of the reasons uh, why the Treasurer uh, has been identifying savings in other areas is so that we can fund uh, this sort of thing which really uh, is why we have governments. Okay, Senator Firefield, thank you as ever for your time today on Sky News. Thanks very much, Tom. A quick break now on lunch.